सहना वबतु सहना भुनक्तु सह वीर करवा वह तेजस्विना बधी तमस्तु माँ विद्विषा वह ओम शांति 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम वसुदेव वसुत देव कंसचाणुरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गुरु कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गुरु so we are at chapter 8 we are meeting after 2 weeks so things have, might have become a little rusty <laughs> but we are on chapter 8 which is imperishable brahman akshara brahman and this word akshara is it comes many times in here and we finished last time verse 18 and 19 and uh, basically it was talking about manifestation and unmanifestation of beings and um the english translation of 18 and 19 was from the unmanifest all the manifested proceed at the coming of the day they are talking about brahma ji at the coming of night they dissolve verily in that alone which is called the unmanifest so they are talking about day and night all it means is those activities are happening in this universe of you know uh, creation or manifestation is a better word and then dissolution and then it's a cycle and then the 19 says this same multiple of beings are being born again and again and are dissolved into unmanifest helplessly avashya bola tha unhone o partha at the coming of the night and they come forth again at the coming of the day so basically our tendency even at the time of pralaya it is still there in unmanifested form and when the creation happens again it comes back again so that was the whole idea in this and we went in very much in detail now we'll go to verse 20 i think few people have not muted okay so i'll just do it all right so <clears throat> verse 20 is going to talk about you know consciousness now so let's see what it says verse 20 is परस्तस्मातु भावन्य अव्यक्त व्यक्ता सनातन यु भूतेषु नश्यत्सु न विनश्यति पर इज हायर तस्मात देन दैट तू इज बट भाव सो यूजली भाव हिंदी में हम लोग बोलते हैं कोई फीलिंग वगैरह पर यहाँ पर उसका डिफरेंट मीनिंग है मीन्स एग्जिस्टेंस अन्य अनदर अव्यक्त सो वी ऑल नो नाउ दिस वर्ड मे अनमेनिफेस्ट अव्यक्ता देन द अनमेनिफेस्टेड सनातन वी हैव हर्ड दिस वर्ड सो मेनी टाइम सनातन धर्म इट मीन्स इटर्नल यू सह इज दैट सर्वेशु इन ऑल भूतेशु बींग्स नश्यत्सु वेन डिस्ट्रॉयड न इज नॉट विनश्यति इज डिस्ट्रॉयड सो यू नो हियर समटाइम देर इज सम लिल बिट कन्फ्यूजन इज पीपल्स mind that they start calling the subtle body as atma right and actually in tech very technical word atma is same as parmatma which is that part of their consciousness so the subtle body is that unmanifest there are two levels of unmanifest basically and when we go through the whole thing then you will get it what i'm trying to say so bhagwan said that first he said that the entire world goes into unmanifest it's that's called avyakta so what avyakta means uh, technically it means that what we cannot grasp with with our five senses so something which is there but j- i just cannot grasp it so and it cannot be not only grasped by the senses but also not by mind and intellect okay so it's going to be on we can get a little uh, kind of understanding of it yes but you can't completely grasp it that's what it means so it has gone into the state of unmanifested avyakta so the example given we saw that earlier i'm just kind of repeating it it is like a seed the seed is the whole tree is in the seed but it is in unmanifest form and when the right conditions come it becomes a tree something like that so the same way the entire world when it goes into that unmanifested form so in sanskrit that's called avyakta so that this word is used many times and but what krishna bhagwan is saying in this verse is that 
there is another unmanifest, there's another unavyakta factor which is superior, you know, it is uh, uh, param and subtler, further subtler than the unmanifest that we are talking about. And that is what the supreme reality is, which is called the unmanifest. There are two unmanifests, basically. One is the one that is like a seed and the other one is which is beyond that, another one. And wo bhi avyakta hai, isi liye usko bhi avyakta kaha gaya hai. Magar the main um, words over here are, he says, parastas tasmatu means subtler and uh, superior. Then that's what, and bhava I already said is existence. So that existence is there and that is what is consciousness. And, and, um, Usko supreme reality bhi bolte hai. We have seen all these words. And another very important word for, for that particular avyakta, the second one, the one that is beyond and all, usko, that is eternal, sanatana. Because the other one is not eternal. You know, the lower man manifest is not eternal. It is constantly changing and modifying and uh, taking birth and dying. We know all our bodies and, you know, all our subtle bodies are like that. So, uh, so... If you want to say it another language, you know, scientific language, it is conditioned by the time. This first manifest is conditioned by the time. And, uh, uh, but the superior reality, the other avyakta or other unmanifest, that's unconditioned by time. And that's so, usko bhi avyakta ka but unconditioned by time. And the word over here to, to indicate that it is different Us anya word, anya word everybody knows in Hindi means something different. And then so it says, parastas uh, asmat bhava anya. So anya kaha gaya. And so um, this one is, um, Sanatan, we already talked about it. So this is another way of looking at it. This one is, is a very substratum hmm, of the whole world. So so the example given by Nikhila Nanji was that uh, we go back to Mandukya, that we have those three states, right? Waking and uh, dreaming and deep sleep. So deep sleep is that first avyakta. Just may seed form me sab kuch hai. And then but, so this drama keeps on happening. That we, we also go every day go to sleep. It, it, everything becomes avyakta and deep sleep. Then we wake up and then it manifests again and all that. So where is this drama happening? In pure consciousness. So it's from that perspective that, that pure consciousness is that param avyakta so um th that is a substratum you can call it and and the another way of looking at it the world projects from there and it goes back into it so that whole drama of the world is also happening in that consciousness which is the substratum and he also gave an example of the movie that we have seen it many times the screen is there and then we see the light when the light is projected through the projector then we see the movie and when the movie goes away, it becomes dark, right? So the, the dark, darkness and the movie both are supported by that screen. So that's another way of looking at it, that, that you know, whether the world comes into existence or not in existence or manifestation is a better word, both are supported by that. And so that, and the screen remains hidden uh, behind that cinema, same way the, this, uh, the second avyakta they're talking about, the param avyakta, it stays hidden from us. That's why when, suddenly if you tell somebody about consciousness, they cannot comprehend it. So we have to go to the shastra. Shastras are the one telling us that, hey, there is something like that. And then you start contemplating upon it. So even you can say this way, that the pure consciousness is the screen on which the drama of manifestation, sustenance and dissolution take place. And this continuously keeps on happening and the other thing in this verse he talked about was that he said ya sarveshu bhuteshu uh, nashyatsu na minashyati so mitla uh, it remain undestroyed unaffected uh, un it is undestructible this final unmanifest that he was talking about and na vinashyati means when even when all the beings are destroyed or the entire cosmos get Actually, it is not even destroyed. It goes in unmanifest. But destroyed word again creates confusion, you know. But we, in the language, we use that word destroyed, you know. It's, so it remains untouched. So that just not, nothing happens to it. 
and uh, or one more way of looking at it that that uh, even after the cycle goes into the state of unmanifestation this supreme reality stays untouched just like the sunlight gets un stays untouched no matter what happens on the on the earth you know good bad or you know whatever happens sunlight always stays the same so <clears throat> And, and the, the way you can look at it is just like the movie screen that in that supreme reality, the unmanifest world exists also and is projected also. And then one very important thing he mentioned if for people who are like science and the scientists over here. At present, the science has no comprehension of the uh, supreme reality. That doesn't mean to say that certain scientists don't believe in it. They do. <laughs> you know, my husband is another example that he's a scientist, but he believes in God. So, um, but if you go to pure materialistic people uh, and they will just keep trying to find, you know, they say, oh, consciousness is something just created by the brain or something. That's how, that's what they say, right? So they are not the, those kind of group of scientists. They don't have not comprehended that the world, it's a cycle. Like if you go to that big bang theory, that it's a cycle. That much they know. That it goes into unmanifest and comes back again. But they have not uh, kind of uh, dwelled into that substratum part of it. That, you know, there is a substratum which is real and changeless. Because if you go back to chapter 2, that when we were discussing this, that uh, Swamiji, you know, Chinmayananji had mentioned a very big scientific fact that the law says that in order for the uh, to experience change, you need something changeless. Without that, you cannot. You know, it's like the, you need the screen, which is relatively changeless, if you want to see the movie. You know, um, so or the another very good example in in the shastras they talk about is a river. If the river to flow, you need a river bed. Without a river bed, a river cannot flow. You cannot flow it like, like in the sky or something you need the river bed so which is steady so if you put the same uh, formula here so in order for us to experience all the changing phenomena we, we see that everything is changing in this world you need a changeless substratum a witness and that's what it is so that changeless substra substratum is mentioned over here the supreme reality or the uh, the param um, unmanifestation so Basically, in short, what he's trying to say in this verse is that that um, this changeless substratum does not get destroyed even when all beings and forms are destroyed. And then in the in the next verse, he's going to say that is going to be the supreme goal of everybody to realize and attain that. That's going to be saying he will be saying in the next verse. So, any question, comment, or anybody want to add anything to this? Unmanifest. Yeah. Urmilji. So Umaji, would you say that the, the first unmanifestation is uh, Atma and then the second one is Paramatma? Well, see when you say Atma and Paramatma, that is like saying uh, worldly example would be one drop of water and the whole entire ocean. Right? So, so the, the drop in the water in the ocean is not going to be different than, than the, the entire ocean. It's just the, the volume. Everything together, usko paramatma bola. Or jab atma is when it is manifesting in each one of us, that's why it's called atma. It's a technical thing. It's like, better example, I'll give you the space. You know, space is one, right? We cannot cut space, no matter what we do. It gives an illusion of being cut in a sense that if I make a, my house, then this house, I have this room space and I call it a room space, but technically it is not cut. Now apply the same rule to Atma and Paramatma. So that's where it is. But what they are talking about, the other unfest is Jivatma. Jivatma is the, like, jo bolte na, subtle body, jo hamara, ek to hai, stool sharir, which is made of this Panch Mahabhut, and then we have mind, intellect, and tendencies. That according to our Shastras, that's what travels in the next life. So that becomes unmanifest for us. 
or or you know that's how okay, okay. but it, everything that's is so powered cool. by that consciousness which is undivided undestructible and all that i don't know does that make did, did it get, yeah no I, I yeah so i got it so yeah. that uh, okay yeah. so after we die or if a person dies so whatever is carried into the next life that's unmanifested yeah but that's also unmanifest correct but there is he's talking about there's one more unmanifest behind that you know which yeah. is that consciousness yeah, right. yes okay yes mm. okay thank you mm -hmm. any other question comment okay then volunteer to read bhagavad gita anil ji would you like to read but verily there exists higher than that unmanifested avyakta another unmanifested which is eternal which is not destroyed when all beings are destroyed the same black board is approached by different teachers to explain different subjects during a single day in a classroom the mathematics teachers geometrical figures and calculations are wiped clean by the geography teacher to design his maps of the world and to trace the path of rivers the location of lakes and the position of mountains when mountains rivers and oceans represented on the blackboard and he in his turn represents there on the laws of chemical reactions with the various elements and their compounds among themselves and with others the history teacher makes the blackboard clean again to refill it with the ancestral trees of dynasties destroyed and the families forgotten each teacher comes and marks out on the blackboard different designs which represent the design of knowledge that each teacher has in his bosom but all of them were chopped out and executed on the same changeless blackboard which illumines the mathematical calculations the geographical data the chemical formula and the historical facts in turn so he gave a beautiful example right just like the movie and the screen he gave of the blackboard and different subjects that when the teachers come blackboard supports everything and then pe people can come and do different things same way the consciousness is like a substratum like a blackboard on which the drama of this cosmos comes and goes comes and goes and god knows how many worlds and everything you know brahma ji's world and our world and everything is supported by that umaji um, so consciousness self only thing it does is illumines whatever we want to do exactly yes so you know there are but also you know if you go deep into it without that we have nothing yes <laughs> so it is the usi se sab kuch aaya hai absolutely yeah. and then advait wale bolenge ki wo hi ban gaya hai sab kuch you know that's another concept that you know they are not talking about this over here but we have discussed it like in our chinmaya mission class last class in 10th grade we 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 gave them play doh and we say okay make something out of it so everybody you know there were few artists and they made very nice things and then we said okay now just make a ball again and everybody got attached to their thing they didn't want to let go also <laughs> you know so hey come on look you can go back and now you can make it again you can next time you can make it even better because now you have ex experience so something like that you know so there are so many aspects to it but once you get the uh, basic picture then you know you can infer from there so many different things similarly the changing world of unmanifested must have one changeless substratum that which is not destroyed by the destruction of all beings bhutas when in the evening the students and teachers have left the classroom the blackboard still remains the principle of pure consciousness itself unmanifest in as much as it is not perceivable by the sense organs or comprehensible by the mind and intellect is indicated here when the lord declares beyond this unmanifested 
there is the other eternal existence the unmanifest so you know in some ways no example can really be perfect example <laughs> but we have to just infer few different things from it so you know in this um changeless thing he was just saying that the blackboard always remains you know and then different people come and do different things but then here also he's saying that um, obviously blackboard is comprehensible to us we know what blackboard is but this particular avyakta is not comprehensible from our mind that's the only difference in this example but still gives a very good point you know it cannot be compared to anything exactly it is that's why hindi mein aur bhi hai अनुपम जो वर्ड है ना अनुपम मीन्स किस कोई उपमा नहीं दी जा सकती उसकी यू नो दैट्स वाई दर्ड इज यूज फॉर दैट कॉन्शियसनेस ऑल्सो अनुपम और भगवान के लिए दनिफेस्ट वास दीड्स ऑफ द मैनिफेस्ट सेट एंड दे कॉन्स्टिट्यूट वाद वेदांत इंडिकेट्स बाई इट्स वेरी सिमिलर टर्म इग्नोरेंस अविद्या इग्नोरेंस कैन ओनली बी एन एग्जिस्टेंट समथिंग I cannot be ignorant of my tail since I have not a tail. That which is truth, the ignorance of which generates the avidya in me, which in which in its turn projects out the unmanifested, is the factor that should be changeless bolt, the permanent substratum for all other conditional knowledges, to he scribbled on. the ultimate reality the self is being indicated here as something that lies beyond the hazy frontiers of the delusionary experiences of creation dissolution and repeated recreation over and over again so ye thoda sa technical hai i'll try my best to explain because as we go further into the bhagavad gita chapters we will understand this lot more uh that what why does koivalana why does the world come into existence so it is something like this i'll go with the example because that only will clarify if i start explaining it will go over my own, on my own head it will go over because it look complicated it is something like the snake and the rope so the if you say the rope is a reality okay why do i see the snake on it that because i don't have the knowledge of the rope everybody is with me in that example it, there is a rope lying in my backyard and it is dark and now i don't see the rope so that means i don't have a knowledge of the rope that's why i see the snake so mera ignorance ho gaya ki nahi meri ignorance ki wajah se mujhe i mean uh, snake dikhai de raha hai and and that snake is colored by my own vasnas if if i am very scared of the snake then i'll be screaming and shouting and and if if i am one of those snake charmers type of people i'll say hey the snake dikh raha hai but i'm not worried about it you know so it depends on my own conditioning so there is a one word that two words that swami ji has used in his different commentaries and when we go to chapter 9 we will come across that he calls this non apprehension uh no sorry let's see ha huh, non apprehension causes misapprehension so because non apprehension means i don't get something what really it is and then now i project something that's called misapprehension so so that's why he said that in this world the reason that the the world get manifested it because of ignorance that's one point that we proved it by the snake and the rope theory and the secondly what he said when we use the word ignorance तो वो हमेशा किसी चीज का इग्नोरेंस होता है तो उसके पीछे कोई रियलिटी होती है तभी उसको इग्नोरेंस माना जाता है इसे आई कैन नॉट से दैट यू नो लाइक ही सेड दैट आई कैन नॉट से दैट आई एम इग्नोरेंट ऑफ सम हॉर्न्स ऑन द काउ बिकॉज दैट नेवर एग्जिस्ट बट यू नो इफ देर इज फ्रॉम फार अवे देर इज अ काउ एंड आई स्टार्ट लुकिंग एट अ हॉर्स दैट्स माय इग्नोरेंस बिकॉज देर इज समथिंग ऑफ देयर दैट्स ऑल ही सेइंग सो व्हेन वी यूज द वर्ड इग्नोरेंस देयर हैज टू बी सम रियलिटी बिहाइंड इट इफ आई एम सीइंग द स्नेक there has to be a rope behind it that's why i'm seeing it so that's the those are the two points he's talking about and then he's just also talking about that that um changeless substratum which is permanent that what serves as a as a aadhar jisko bolte hai na hindi mein aadhar aur substratum jiske upar sab kuch duniya project hoti hai you know 
that's what it means i don't know i tried <laughs> i hope somebody got something out of it <laughs> you know is this unmanifest then the supreme or is there yet another factor which alone is fit to be the goal of life so he just he just swami ji is asking question answer milega bhagwan se bhagwan bolenge ki wo is जो जो सब स्ट्रेटम बोला है और जो अव्यक्त बोला है जो कि परमानेंट है जो अक्षर है वो ही हमारा गोल है दैट्स व्हाट ही इज गोइंग टू से इन द नेक्स्ट वर्स यू नो बिकॉज़ दिस सॉरी गो अहेड व्हेन व्हेन वी आर मेडिटेटिंग ऑन सेल्फ सो दैट इज बेसिकली वी आर ट्राइंग टू रिकॉग्नाइज द सेल्फ अगेन एंड अगेन एंड अगेन करेक्ट करेक्ट absolutely or that's why in this uh, chapter that kavim puranam jo jo bahut famous two verses hai jisme unhone eight indicators diye bhagwan uh, matlab unke bare mein kya bolte hain substratum ke bare mein consciousness ke bare mein you know that helps us to to connect to that self and that is the goal also the more i contemplate on it the more chances that i, I will establish in it यू नो बिकॉज अभी हम लोग इंटेलेक्चुअली समझते हैं पर अभी भी कुछ थोड़ा डाउट होता है अभी फुल्ली हम लोग हम लोग बोल देंगे मुँह से ओ आई बिलीव इन गॉड एंड दिस एंड दैट बट यू नो वी डोंट बिहेव लाइक दैट इन अवर वर्ल्ड वेन वी गो आउट बिकॉज वी स्टिल समेयर दो डाउट आर स्टिल दे आर इन अस यू नो बट एज यू डू मोर एंड मोर एंड मोर मेडिटेशन ऑन सर it gets easier and easier to recognize yes no no doubt and that's why in chapter 6 bhagwan said that practice you know abhyas and vairagya and vairagya is nothing but it's not vairagya doesn't mean to sab chhod chhad ke baith jao that's not what vairagya vairagya means to understand that this this avyakta is temporary the second one right yeah that's all you know and and the more the temporary thing we hang on to the more dukhi we will be you know and the more we hang on to the permanent the happier we will be so that's what this but as, as you meditate on self that attachment to things naturally goes away yeah it, it get loosened up but then a gaad dheere dheere khulni shuru ho jati hai we cannot say that ek minute mein ho jayega but it gets better for sure yeah the more we we contemplate the more we study bhagavad gita the more, more we do that it definitely gets better yeah thank you mm. any other question or comment any wisdom anybody has to share okay so this one got finished pretty quickly so we can go to the next one i kind of knew it so i did prepare the next one too so everybody is satisfied with this one okay so we'll go to uh, what krishna bhagwan is saying about the goal so this this word we'll see when we come okay i'm going to first chant avyaktokshar ityuktah tamahu paramam gatim yam prapya nivartante tad dhama paramam mama avyakta we know now by now unmanifest aksharah so this also word has come because this chapter itself called akshar brahma imperishable You know, जिसको कोई डिस्ट्रॉय नहीं कर सकता इति इज दस उक्त इज कॉल्ड इसको कहा जाता है अन, ऐसा कहा है कृष्ण भगवान है ना इज वेरी कहना स्मार्ट ही डजेंट टेल अर्जुन मैं बोल रहा हूं इसलिए तुम मान ले ऐसा कहा जाता है मीन्स कौन कहता है शास्त्र कहते हैं वाइज पीपल कहते हैं यू नो इज सेंग एवरीबडी ऑल ऑफ दैम से लाइक दैट बिकॉज अगर खाली कृष्ण का तो मैं कह रहा हूँ तो अर्जुन को डाउट हो सकता है भाई ये तो मेरा दोस्त है और कह रहा है शायद नहीं भी होगा <laughs> नहीं सभी लोग कहते हैं यू नो स्मार्ट स्मार्ट लोग दैट्स वाई उक्त कहा यहाँ पर तम इज दैट आहू से परमम द हाइएस्ट गतिम सो ये वर्ड गति इज इन संस्कृत इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग मीन्स गोल और गति गोल और साधन दोनों को गति बोलते हैं लाइक like बोलते हैं ना कि स्पीड गति को लाइक किसी की तरफ बढ़ना तो गोल और बढ़ना दोनों को गति माना जाता है बट यहाँ पर हम लोग को गोल लेंगे द वर्ड यम इज विच प्राप्य हैविंग रीच्ड न इज नॉट निवर्तंते इज रिटर्न तत दैट धाम अबोर्ड परम धाम बोला जैसे कि 
जो भक्ति में होते हैं ना वो लोग होते हैं वो भगवान के धाम पे जाएंगे हम उसका मतलब क्या होता है वो यहाँ पर बताया जाएगा बिकॉज ऐसा नहीं कि कोई फिजिकली कहीं जाने की जरूरत है यू कैन बी इन भगवान धाम सिटिंग ऑन दिस अर्थ ऑल्सो दस वर्ट यू नो भगवत गीता गोन टू टेल यू वट डज इट मीन सो अ बोर्ड और प्लेस धाम परमम इज अगेन हाइएस्ट मम इज माई so what is krishna bhagwan saying over here so we we saw that in the previous verse <clears throat> that supreme reality which is called the avyakta or unmanifest at the highest level so because it it remains unmanifest that one remains unmanifest all the time you know the other one comes into into existence right so and because it remains unmanifest all the time that one really cannot be comprehended by the senses Or, or the mind or intellect, and and in some ways you can say that it does not does not really interact with our sense of uh, organ of perception. Like when I open my eyes, I see this world, but I cannot see what substratum behind it, right? So my senses are not capable of interacting with it. And then and it is from from mind and intellect which is beyond comprehension, like we discussed earlier. So this. It, in this verse is called avyakta and akshara so akshara means indestructible and this word word has come many times over here in this chapter uh, so other way you can say that you know we have repeated this many times but i was going to say that you know shastron mein na repetition bahut hota hai because wo bolte hai na ki abhi tumhari khopdi mein ghusa nahi hai <laughs> so usko bar bar thokte jao I'm using my Mumbai language, you know. So that's what it is. Keep. Why are you telling me this again? Again, because you have not gotten it. That's why. So, वैसे तो उन्होंने chapter two में सब कुछ बता दिया था, पर Arjun did not get it. Just like we, you know, sutra form में सब बता दिया. उसी को बार बार repeat करेंगे, पर उसको धीरे-धीरे आगे बढ़ाएंगे. So, uh, what does it mean? Indestructible, indestructible does not go through any change, any modification. It does not get destroyed at all. and then i was telling you about this word uktah iti uktah so it is said in our great scriptures and by the great masters so only krishna bhagwan is not saying it everybody who is knowledgeable or gyani will say that and that supreme reality alone is called the final destination that's what he reveals in this ultimate gati paramam gati paramam gati of all beings and all lokas we saw ब्रह्मा जी के लिए भी वो परम गति वही है सो 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 अर्लियर वी सॉ दैट द वर्ड अक्षर एंड इनडिस्ट्रक्टिबल वॉज मैंशन इन वर्ड थ्री वेर वेर अर्जुन एस दैट क्वेश्चन इन द बिगनिंग ऑफ द चैप्टर है वट इज दिस अक्षर ब्रह्म सो भगवान सेट वट वॉज अक्षर ब्रह्म एंड देन वर्ड्स इलेवन एंड थर्टीन में भी समी वॉन्ट्स टू गो बैक एंड रीड दोज वर्ड्स इज अगेन you know these because so basically in the shastras this is called akshara i mean indestructible very important word to understand and and then we saw that the previous four five verses we were talking about brahma ji and his time frame and god god knows billions and millions and billions aur hamara sar chakra gaya wo number se you know so that wo bhi permanent nahi hai you know so this is usko akshara bola gaya akshara and akshara so akshara means destructible akshara means indestructible and and so these other part of it they go into the state of unmanifestation and keep going back and forth but this one just remains the same so that akshara is the permanent goal that you are looking for and and then bhagwan says a very very important thing in this verse yam prapyana nivartante that means that having attained that you won't come back in the sansar so we'll try to understand that what it actually means it means that i'll never come back that's not what it means it means that you if you will come back you will come back knowingly like a avatar you will come back or some mahatmas also they know about why they are coming here you know or like when vivekanand it seems that his guru knew who vivekanand was you know and that's why he kind of so happy to see him because he knew that he had come in this world to do a job he's a very great soul so same way so what it means is that um if just go back to the snake and the rope what does means of not to come back i saw the uh, snake because i didn't see the rope right now i know so that guru came and put the light on it and say 
you fool, this is not a snake, this is a rope. So he showed me the rope with the light of knowledge. Now I know it's a rope. So if I go back into my backyard, I may see the snake, but I'll immediately know it's a rope. Is that true or not? Or, or then after two, three times, I will see the rope only. And you know, I don't know if you guys um, have seen this, something called the magic eye. Anybody knows what that is? Magic eye is like, they create this uh, kind of uh, design on a paper and you keep staring at it, staring at it and some picture kind of pops up. Anybody's done that? It was very popular about 10, 15 years. You have? Lata ji has. Okay, so this is what happens. You are not seeing, you are not seeing it. And after about five minutes of frustration and all, when you're about to give up, you see something. You know, some picture inside. And it looks 3D and looks so cool. Next time when you go, jaldi se dikhai dega ho. And a time will come, you will know that there is that in there. Now, now apply the same principle over here. You know, and whoever has not seen the magic eye, go and try it. They'll put magic eye in the Google and it will show you and then it will tell you what to do and the picture will pop out, you know. So that means that what it actually means is that, that uh, once I comprehend what really it is, I will no longer have all the fear and anxiety and things like that of that snake or rope we can go. And then... Uh, so my confusion and ignorance is gone, actually. That's what it means. That means because I've transcended those things, you know. Even by mistake, I will see the, the snake. I will, two minutes, I will be okay. Otherwise, I'll be like going crazy, <laughs> you know. So that's what it means. So bondage, all these things, you know, because I have realized the reality. That's what it means by not coming back in the sansar again. It doesn't have to be physically. Physically also it's possible, but I wanted to bring this a very important point because Krishna Bhagwan and also Swamiji talks a lot about Jivan Mukti, right? While you are here, you can comprehend that and you can live in, in that um, reality. You know, like Bhagwan will say poetically that Jo mera sachmuch bhakt hota hai, usme rehta hu, wo mujme rehte hai. That means comprehending it completely and not being scared of all the other things and all that. You can look at it different ways that you want to, you know. So, and then the other very, very simple example, which may not fit 100% here, but I will still, because I think it will make a point. It's like once I become educated, I cannot be uh, murkh again. You know, once I know how to read, you cannot say, now, now forget about, and just when something comes in front of you, don't read it. It cannot happen, right? The same way you cannot fall back into the sansar. That's what it means. So, and that's why it's called the supreme abode. Okay. And then there was a, when, when I was listening to um, Nikhila Nanji, he was talking about, you know, our um, head of Chinmaya Mission before. Fale Chinmaya Nanji the, fit Tejo Maya Nanji hue. Fit Tejo Maya Nanji by the third one has come, you know. And uh, Tejo Maya Nanji was a, is also a poet. So he writes a lot of like uh, poetry and songs and all that. So he wrote a song and you know, like they say ki that abode, the permanent abode is, there is nothing there, right? So he said, Pani na pavan na dharti na akasva, amar wo desva jahan se ayo, jahan se tum ayo wo amar jaga. And then, you know, you everybody knows about this Vivekanand's uh, very great sentence. He said, you are the children of that immortal bliss, he calls, you know. So that's what it is. All of us have come from there only. And that is that great place and which is free from all concept of time and space is beyond all that. And it's such a fantastic place. Nikhil Alanji was saying that our brain also cannot comprehend it. <laughs> it is that fantastic, okay. And, and uh, that is Bhagwan is saying is my Param Dham. And uh, you can also attain that. And Nikhil Energy is very funny. So he said that Bhagwan is giving invitation to come there. <laughs> he said, he said, come to me, become one with me and attain this supreme goal. And then uh, suddenly you say, oh, really, you want me to come? But how do I do that? 
<laughs> you know because okay i want to come and he said are buddhu i have told you so many times like so far he's been telling us but we we still cannot confirm it i've told you okay okay don't worry i'm going to tell you one more time how to come to me so then next verse he's going to say one more time how to come to him so i thought this was kind of interesting you know saints and sages they know how to kind of you know in a very humorous way bring us a little bit higher so this is what this verse is any question comment anybody wants to add anything Let's see what yeah we can still read we have time param dham and you know what does it mean not to fall back in sansara everybody got the picture okay all right who wants to read meena ji you can read nobody else is which is called the unmanifest and the imperishable that they say is the highest goal path they who reach it never again return that is my highest abode state so here see how swami ji has put you know in the translation highest goal and he also put path in the parentheses because sanskrit mein path and goal they yes. they have this common word and then also abode and state so you can say this is a highest avastha jisko bolte hain hindi you know highest state hmm. what has been indicated in the previous stanza as the other and unmanifest which is the eternal existence which knows no destruction is explained here as the imperishable mentioned earlier in this chapter verse 3 and 13 the imperishable was defined as brahman the substratum for the entire universe and we were also advised that we must meditate upon om as a symbol of this imperishable the self which is of the nature of pure awareness is that which lends existence and dynamism to the unmanifested vastness and makes them capable of projecting out to form the manifested world of activities and behaviors this eternal unmanifest factor unmanifested factor the imperishable self is the highest goal for man to achieve so we kind of hashed it out in the in the previous verse that this this is the uh, which substratum from which the entire cosmos a play of cosmos comes into a existence you know and that is the our goal to reach that's basically saying over here hmm. it's interesting i'm just thinking about the snake and the um the rope. rope without the rope the snake cannot exist correct without the substratum this play of maya cannot cannot exist. happen absolutely yes. you got that's it yes it yeah in all other states of existence there is again and again the experience of return just as sleep is not the end of life but only a refreshing pause between two spans of activity so to death is not an end but often only a restful pause in the unmanifested condition that comes between two successive manifested existences in different embodiments it was already indicated that even from higher levels of consciousness the ego centers will have to return to exhaust their unmanifested cravings the vastness birth we have already been told is a house of pain and finitude and therefore complete satisfaction can be reached only when there is no rebirth no return so many different things are there in this paragraph so basically first we have to know that you know we when we go to sleep then we know it we are just resting for a little while then the moment we get up all the problems that we slept with will come back again <laughs> so you know i i don't want to sound so negative but you know what i mean and then he's just talking about a physical death also just a thoda sa rest mil raha hai beech mein between the two manifestations you know so if you this is going to continue 
And then it's kind of interesting what he talked about that um, up to the highest level also, there is some vasana there. That's why, you know, some people say ki ye swarg lok mein bhi itta competition kyu hai, that Indra Bhagwan is, Bhagwan bola usko, but basically, you know, Indra king of all the, you know, devatas. He also has so much like jealousy and this and that, you know, he's, he's chasing other people's wives. God knows all those things he's doing because of, it's still there. Other problems are not there, bodily afflictions and old age and all that. Other, but this competition, all this is there. And then if you go to other Puranic stories and you see Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh, there may be some competition. Ho hai. Stories are there. You know, that, hey, you know, Shivji wanted to know ki bhai, how to know um, mera, kya bo, ek, bhoat famous story hai na, ki there was this um, lingam was there of uh, light and he said go find the uska end of it so Brahma ji and, and Vishnu ji go and Brahma ji got tired in the middle and he, he lied <laughs> that's why they said there is no, no uh, mandir of Brahma ji but Vishnu ji ne sach bol diya ki bhai meko ar par mila nahi anyway what we are trying to say ki unme bhi competition vagara dikha hai because up to that point there is still problem that's what they're trying to say. If you want a complete peace, complete bliss, complete happiness, then you have to make the, that substrate on the goal. And once you establish in that, then you will be out of this house of pain and finitude. That's what he's trying to say. Over here. So what about this Brahmaji and Vishnu? I mean, they still have vastness, that means. Is that correct? Then? Because, because uh, like we, we understood, know that it is coming from the avidya. So true, up to that level also, you are not completely pure. I mean, reaching that itself seems so higher. <laughs> true, true. But here, Krishna Bhagavan is saying you can bypass everything. Bypass, <laughs> right? Yeah, but if you, if you have a desire, you know, like in the like world, three desire desires are very strong, hoti hai, you know. Like, mer, mer, sab log mer ko, uh, kya bolte hai? look up to me, things like that, you know, and then have money and I should have fame and money and all those. So, agar kisi ko wo chahi, you can get the highest level of that too. Indra ban jau, usse aage bhi chale jau, Brahma ban jau. Hum log ne dekha ki, in the previous verses, Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh is of only one universe. But multi-universe mein there are different Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Because I know in our, our um, whatever childhood work we are, we, we call Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh, God. And from our perspective, they are. Anything higher than us, we have become God for us. Right? But what we learn in Bhagavad Gita, there is another unmanifest beyond that, which is the boss. Okay? That's what we are talking about. So this is, this is, this is what gets revealed by the Shastras. No, we will be Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh. Okay. Here it is. Swarg bolte hain, you know, going up to the Brahma Lok. Brahma Lok is not Swarg. See, that's another confusion. No, no. no. Uh -huh. I meant Brahma Lok. Brahma Lok. Ha ha. Okay. And these are beyond that. I mean, the Indra yes. and the Vishnu. No, uh, Vishnu and uh, Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. Mahesh, yes. They are yes. beyond that. Beyond the, what? Beyond the Brahma Loka? Is that what No, 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 saying? no, no. Brahma Loka is just the word. See, everybody gets fascinated by creation. Yes. See, maintenance is not okay. If it is, it maintain it. And when it is dissolved, it is all done. You create it, it is all done. It is all done. It is all done. Right? So, Brahma Loka is all done. If you create it, it is all done. And is that the end? No, 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 no. Okay. There is, there is another unmanifest beyond that. Yes. Okay. That's what they're talking about. Like when we come to chapter 15, they will use, Krishna Bhagavan, we use the word Purushottam. Because one hota hai ki Purush and Prakriti. Right? Mm -hmm. And there is a Purushottam means beyond these two, there is a, another factor. Uh, Purusho may be Uttam, usko naam de de, because it's hard to kind of describe it in languages. That's why I like the word consciousness a lot more because it's easier to, to manage that word consciousness. Because the mo moment you say other things, then there's a confusion on us. Because in Hinduism, there is so much freedom. Freedom has caused a lot of confusion also. Right? <laughs> because, you know, everyone is different, everyone is different. So it's like, 
बट वेन वी कम टू भगवद गीता थोड़ा सा क्लैरिटी मिलती है हम लोग को कि वट दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट यू नो often educated students of the present generation ask why after realizing the self should there be no return the question though natural cannot stand even a moment's scrutiny generally cause hunting is for things that happen and not for things that do not happen nobody anxiously inquires why i am not in a hospital but an intelligent inquirer has every right to inquire why i have gone to the hospital we may inquire why the infinite has become the finite but the question does not arise is at all why the infinite should not fall again into the finite this question is as absurd as my inquiring as to why you are not yet in jail for not going to jail no cause hunting is necessary and if you have actually gone to jail there is certainly a justification to ask and inquire what is the exact crime for which you have been sent to jail so this can the whole thing be very confusing huh yeah. but basically it just like you know that reminded me of a drishtant and see if that if you can understand this drishtant because then it will become little bit clear i think that you know you may have heard this story i mean drishtant that there was a there was a scientist and an ordinary man uh, standing under a tree both of them huh and a snake falls from the tree the snake was climbing and it fell to jab wo snake gira na to to jo scientist tha wo bolne laga ye kaun sa snake hai kahan se aaya hai you know aur kaun si species ka hai kab upar chada ye sab wo sochne laga aur wo jo ordinary aadmi tha na wo dur ja ke khada ho gaya ha because he was smarter because he wanted to get away from the snake so it doesn't bite him and that's what happened and ye khada khada tha pooch raha tha 10 question usko snake ne kaat liya <laughs> no? so what swami ji is saying over here is hey you have been fallen in this sansara to find out why you have fallen because of the avidya and get out of it don't worry about it ki baki log jo substratum hai wo kyun nahi or something like that don't ask those questions because nobody knows the answer <laughs> you know because there could be various reasons and you know there are so many philosophers so many swamis who will give you different different answer you know like um it somebody said that god was like feeling lonely so they said oh let me play a game and so he made multitudes of himself and because it is god's game it is so perfect that hum sach mein bhool gaye hum kaun hai bole dhoondo abhi kaun ho tum you know hide and seek playing with himself so anyway that's a separate thing so basically that's what he's trying to say don't even go into that arena ki you know now that you are in a sansar find out why you have fallen so you can rise up again to that status should i find out how to get out of it okay. yeah yeah how to is good the question that why did you uh, you know come down that is a good question but why the whole infinite becomes this that is kind of a not necessary that's all he's saying like you know it was sarva priyanand ji who was explaining and he said or maybe it was vivekananda i'm not sure who said that when you get enlightened there is no questions left yes. the questions are always on the ignorant side <laughs> right right that's true yeah yeah so that's something like that is and he's going to talk about in the next paragraph about another example it's hard to explain but that's what i see urmil ji you had a question ji yeah. yeah so i mean if it's so hard it's so difficult then how would you stay motivated i mean if if even if brahma vishnu mahesh even they are not there so how, how okay so there, you know? so motivation can come from our own experience no it somebody said hey some nastic person say hey i don't need god okay if you don't need god don't pursue who's ta- telling you okay but na- usually no nastic log kab astik bante hain jab koi problem aati hai tab wo sa- kh- khud ke dimag se uska solution nahi milta sansar ke logon se uska solution nahi milta koi puja kuch bhi kar lo nahi milta tab bolte hai ki hey bhagwan bhagwan yaad aata hai right so apne own experience i can get motivated you know so that's what it is and then sometime it is a purva sanskars also like some people like we saw in chapter 6 that if you have done some sadhana it will immediately start 
coming in you know childhood maybe some people are connected and some people connect later and all the so motivation is a very personal thing if you ask me and until you are really motivated from inside superficially you're not going to get anything because you won't feel committed and to to go on the path bolte na ki wo ek kahawat hai dhoondne se bhagwan bhi mil jate hain right so so that's what it is that motivation is a very personal thing and how far you want to go to find. some some people i met some one or two people in a, in later on in my life who said they were in america and their quest became so strong wo apna job wab sab chhod ke chale gaye himalaya pe chale gaye you know i mean they they're not saying that you have to do that but i'm just saying that you know how can you define somebody's motivation i don't know it's a personal thing we can never explain to a little girl and make that child understand what are the physical and emotional thrills of married life in her childhood she has not the vehicle for comprehending the biological thrills of sex life but as the same girl grows into her maturity she develops in herself the biological antenna to feel and mentally comprehend the very same thrills which were to her but empty suggestions in early childhood when all she wanted was that her mother should marry her in the same fashion a seeker who lies buried in the dung heap of his mind and intellect cannot in its filthy atmosphere know the vast embrace of the horizon and the glorious fragrance of the fresh breeze as he detaches himself from his false identifications through the process of meditation advised uh, verses 12 13 and 14 he as it were hatches out of his limiting adjuncts and enters the vaster fields of subtler experiences on waking up alone can one realize the falsehood of one's dreams the dreamer can never so long as he dreams realize the delusion from which he is suffering having awakened from a dream the waker cannot be persecuted by his dream sorrows and his dream happiness so i think that uh, urmil ji little bit of your answer is over here how you get motivated if you feel the need of being motivated then only you will be motivated so he's saying that you know like the people who are hardcore materialistic tum unko samjhane ki koshish karo ki bhagwan hai wo to bolenge bhag ja yahan se koi nahi hai bhagwan wagaira right so but the same person jab uska thoda sa loosened hota hai so he just saying that when you become quiet and you meditate and things like that or do certain practices that they tell you like sometimes they also do japa japa is is nothing but quietening your mind that you know when you're concentrating like our teacher used to say that jo wo rosary bead bol ja mala bolte hai na hum log mala ghumana wo har ek culture mein hai actually to usme na wo all your senses are connected to it so your mind gets kind of away from the world and concentrated on that so once you do that mala or repeat the mantra like in hare krishna they will say repeat the hare krishna mantra it, it is a solution to everything because this is how it starts then your mind becomes quiet then you start asking that question who am i where have i come from you know that curiosity comes in you that becomes your motivation and the more you deeper and go you know it's like as though you are in a dream when we are in a dream we think that is a reality but you know or kisi ko koi bolta hai ki agar dream mein aake koi bolega na tumko ye reality nahi hai tum manoge hi nahi lekin chalo samjho thoda doubt aayega dream mein no 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 there is something beyond this also and then then suddenly you wake up and say oh my god this was a dream you know same way he's talking about that this this reality is of that nature that you have to truly awaken to it then you will see that this is completely a dream but right now you know the gurus are the one which is just knocking on our us and saying look look this is a dream <laughs> you know don't take it so real that's what it is the self or pure consciousness is poetically described here by vyasa as the dwelling place of krishna that is my highest dwelling place 
and the Gita, the singer of the song divine, is the self. And as such, the highest goal is to reach the state of pure consciousness, the imperishable, which is available for the experience of the self. This was described at length while the teacher was indicating the nature of knowledge gained by one who attains the state of divine Purusha. 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 Okay. Purusha, yeah. Yeah. What? Okay, that this is just the... Yeah, you can finish uh, that, that sentence also. Okay. What direct path by which this consummate goal can be reached is explained in the following. So what uh, Swamiji is saying, where Krishna Bhagavan is saying, no, my paramam dhamam, uske mein bala hai, my highest dwelling place is like a poetic way of saying that, you know, that particular state where pure consciousness, the imperishable, and then he also says, which is available for experience, uh, experiencer of the self, you know. So it's like um, the... Um, drop in the uh, in the ocean realizes that i am that h2o basically you know that's what it is and and this was and then he's just talking about the other different verses that you know nature of uh, knowledge gained by one so you can look at it both ways once you gain the knowledge everything becomes clear you know or the shastras have told us what to do you follow that Gyan or that knowledge and then also you will experience so you can look at it both ways that if you want to this particular sentence you know that if there is a um, chapter where he's going to talk about that there are different virtues you know 35 virtues are going to come in I think chapter 12 and these are called knowledge because once you develop this this uh, virtues of up knowledge dawns on you you know so that's what it is any question, comment? Anybody wants to add anything? Yeah, I think the motivation also comes is proportional to how much we believe in God. More we believe, motivation will come itself. But the first thing is how much we believe in that. Like you said, yeah, when you start believing when everything is out of your control. That's when you say, okay, God, what, help me now. <laughs> so that's one starting point. But the unless we believe in that and how much we believe, motivation, it, it depends on just that. Yeah, true. I think that's a very good point. Yeah. And the other point I think I was going to talk about was that uh, when we talk about Vishnu and uh, Shivji and all that, to understand who is Brahman, if you if you listen to that Nirvana Shatkam and understand the meaning of each one word of that, it explains exactly what what that uh, uh, what that uh, ultimate entity called Brahman, what that is, where it says I'm not. I am not born, I never die, mm. I don't have body, I don't have any experience, I don't have any of my shishyas, I don't have any guru, I don't have parents, all those things. If you look at, understand that one, I think that's the ultimate. That's what I think defines what Brahman is. So that's, I just thought that's, to me that, when I listen to that and I also read the meaning of that, it becomes very clear what, what we are talking about, about Brahman. And that, again, it says, when it's saying, it's, um, I am this, I'm not that, but then understand that you are also that. In as, essence, you are also that. You're nothing different than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. So, no, that was very good that you, yeah. and Nirman Shatkam, Shatkam, you can put it, somebody can, there are so many people have sung it so beautifully. It's a great way to meditate. Yeah, true. I also like that. Very, very good. Very yeah. good explanation, yeah. Sushilji. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so Umaji, when we, when somebody dies, then that Atma, does it go back to that Paramatma? I mean, does, does So, it I think your question, hmm? I think if I understand your question that, 
once you get that moksha, what happens to the subtle body, right? Because subtle body is the one... No, not moksha. No, when you just are dying from one birth to the other birth, mm-hmm. I mean, you're good. that first unmanifestation that you call first one, so that you are just dead, but you're all your vasanas, everything is there and true, you true, manifest true. it again. Correct. So what happens to the soul? Whatever. So when you say, when you say, that's where the, I think the confusion, it is something like this at that highest level of unmanifest. If you see this description, even in Bhagavad Gita, it's all pervading. It's the subtlest. And from that, everything comes. So that factor, nothing happens to it. What you are talking about is the subtle body. Subtle body is also unmanifest to us. Because it's something like my own thoughts and all. I cannot put a, some kind of a gross body on it. Ki bhai, this is my thought. It is there. I know it is there. I experience it. But I cannot um, put my finger at it what it is. Right? So there are different level of subtlety you can say. One is completely gross body or gross manifestation. It's like I'm seeing the house. I'm seeing my body and things like that. Right? My mind and intellect... So what happens at death, what, that's what your question is, that at death, the physical body dies, not the subtle body. So the punch mahabhut se jo sharir bana hai na, wo punch mahabhut mein wapis mil jata hai. Scientifically also that happens. Whether you bury somebody or you cremate somebody, you know, the punch wo punch tattwa mein mil ke, pani pani mein chala gaya, dust dust mein chali gai, hawa, akash to wahi rehta hai, right? All those things, fire goes with the fire element. So now the subtle body is still there. The vasana is still there. That's why you're taking birth and all. The reason I brought up moksha or jivan mukti, that what happens to the subtle body when you attain that highest level? So the subtle body goes into the subtle elements. That's all it is. It merges into the subtle no, no, but not, uh, but for the time being. Time being, it I is mean, there. It is like a, it is like a, an unmanifested form, but you know, when we call it unmanifest, there are people on this earth, even today, in America, they call them mediums or clairvoyants, or in India, they call them, you know, they can, they can communicate with, with the Atmas and also now. You know, India, they make a very scary thing, like a scary thing. In this country, they don't make a scary thing. There are people who have experience, near-death experience, they have an ability to communicate with their subtle body. Right? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, they can have an ability to communicate with their subtle body. We don't. Normal people, we don't. Okay? So that entity is there. It has become unmanifest for us. That's all it is. You know? I don't know if that answered your question. No, I, I, I mean, I'm getting it. Yeah. So it doesn't actually, that, that, that life in us, it doesn't go, actually go and no, that, mingle with that. No. No. The life, when you say that at the purest level, the life remains untouched. You know, it's like um, mm-hmm. the sunshine is there everywhere, but some places it reflects and some places it doesn't. So the, the subtle body is the one that reflects that consciousness. And that's why oh, subtle body has to enter the physical body for it to become alive. Because that connection from the consciousness is through the subtle body only. That's another very important thing. Because well, you know, my, my body is jad. It is gross. It doesn't have the chetna. The chetna is in, in my mind. So all these things will kind of get a little more clear. It's, it's, a, it's a subtle subject also. It takes a lot of contemplation, hashing out, asking questions and all that, you know. Well, the, uh, uh, the other way to say that is when we are going from one body to other, hmm. the only thing is which is present all the time is consciousness. Correct. Consciousness, consciousness supports everything. Right. So in the, in the same way, when we go with our experience that, okay, I have a waking state, I have a dream state, and I have a deep sleep state. Deep sleep state, I'm aware of nothing. But that deep sleep state also is being supported by something. Yes. So that's what that consciousness, consciousness is present throughout. And even when I don't know anything and I'm in that unmanifested form, it is supported by that. That's another way of looking at it. 
because again and again consciousness makes everything work yes it it is the aadhar of everything right the foundation of everything right so whether you know something is manifested or not manifested usme koi fark nahi padega that's what they are trying to right. tell you exactly you know? because it is something like you know our scientists who don't believe in the consciousness they all oh, became nothingness so nothingness has to be supported by something nahi to aayega kaise kuch so if you if you start thinking about it you cannot but avoid there is there has to be a substratum like in buddhism they don't discuss the substratum they, that's why they just call it shunya but like sarva priyanand ji was saying what they call shunya we call it purna <laughs> we say that everything is come from that <laughs> you know so i think it's very interesting subject okay so let's see uh, we i went a little bit over but this was a interesting you know discussion so i'm going to close bhagavad gita and see little bit we can do of the mission सर्वर्मान परीत्यज्य मेक शरण व्रज अहम तापेभ्य मोक्ष एष्या मा शुच हरि ओं श्रीगुरुभ्यो नम हरि